writing down what your temperature is in the class. And then at the three minute mark, you're gonna be writing it down again. You guys need your attention up here, please. You will be graphing this. You need to write your unit on your graph. So if you look on the back side of the paper, you're gonna see a little graph paper that I've provided. Right here. So if you're making this, oh, let's see. Hey, Miss okay. Hoffman? Yes. Can you take your class to the library real quick? Yes. Thank you. Take a minute. Um, <laughs> Guys, let's go. You can leave your stuff. I want you to go back to Good morning. Thank you, Officer Lynch. My name is Deputy Lynch. I get to work as the resource officer for Sultan School District. Would you mind picking up those scissors? I gave you a few chances and stay with Ms. Gillery. And I told you the truth. I need to the office to follow directions. That's the truth. Take out your thoughts and you can be much bigger issue. Now it's another issue on this one. Boomerang. That's what I made. In, is it unique? Is that your first name? I think we've seen each other around town a couple of times. What, in your view, what's our challenge today? I don't want to say a problem because it may not be a problem. So what, what's the challenge today? I'm just wondering why I got pressed by two, actually now three different people over music that I told them to that I need to concentrate on. Okay. And we were in lunch too, so if we were in lunch and we're not learning, why is that, what, why is it a big deal if we're in lunch and we're not learning music? So that, that's a question for the school board. The Sultan School Board made a no cell phone policy for Sultan Middle School. And I understand that. Okay. And so the admin for the building it's their, they, it's called their charge. They're responsible to uphold the policies of the school district within their building. He's the administrator in charge of the building. He's responsible for you and all the other students when you're on campus. He is the man in charge when you're on campus. She is the lady in charge when you folks are on campus. So that's, that's kind of a long story of the root I understand you're at lunch. You're not in a physical classroom. The middle school's a little bit different than the high school in the cell phone usage, cell phone and, and ear pods or earbuds. What do you call them? Buds or pods? Or what? Either one. So the school board policy, which is set by the board and the superintendent, is no electronics, meaning cell phones, media players, iPods during the school day. And I, I, I don't know if you can have them out before first bell. No, once they're no, in the no, building, they're out. So, so, once, so once they come into the they building, can okay. listen to them on the bus, <coughs> yeah. that's okay. <clears throat> so, so, go ahead. Uh, but why do we not have the right to listen to music in school, but I mean, be on our phones, period, lunch, anything. But I've seen multiple different teachers on their phones. Yep. As adults, as teachers, they use their phone for work, like I use my phones for work. I have two work phones with me. I answered my phone when he called today, because they're my work phones. Teachers usually use their phones for work. Not always, but usually. And the rules for students are different than the rules for teachers. Teachers can leave during lunch and come back. If they're on prep period and they have to run to the store and get something, teachers can leave campus and come back students can't leave campus at lunch and come back. So there's a little bit different rules for teachers or for staff than there are students. And so the cell phones or the, the 
I guess it would be cell phones because I haven't seen a teacher yet with a music device with an iPod or something like that. So the rules are a little bit different for adults. It, like in your house, your parents or the adults in your house probably have a little bit different rules than the kids do. They might be afforded a few more things that you're not afforded, as in privileges, or it could be staying up, or maybe the type of TV shows, or sometimes bandwidth with internet. Sometimes parents get a little faster internet than the kids get. And so here at the school, there's things that the staff is allowed to have that the students are not. And the, the earbuds, connected to a phone or music device is one of those things. I recall not too long ago we had a similar issue in a different class and it took you a while to comply, but you did, so that was good, and you understood that it was supposed to be wired, and I got to listen to wired headsets, so you can listen to music on your laptop, which that is totally okay if you get approved by your teacher. Is that, does that answer, does that, did that answer your question on why a teacher could have a cell phone but a student can't? Okay. Are there other questions I can answer for you? I'm just wondering why three different people had to show up over one small thing. A student refusing to follow directions from an administrator is a big thing in school. So as the resource officer, I'm another resource that they can come. So they can call, so I come down and have a conversation with you. You obviously didn't want to listen to them today, so I came in to listen to see what you had to say, to ask what the challenge was, to sit here and have a conversation, to help you learn why a teacher may or may not be able to have something that a student can't. And I think if you would have gone with the principal down to his office or down to the office to, to chat. You guys would have come to the same, you would have had the same conversation, just in a different setting. As a student within a school like this, you're bound to follow the directives of the administrators of the building. Like when you're on a bus, you have to follow the rules of the district and the bus driver. If you're on a transit bus, it's the transit operator, the coach operator. Um, whenever you're at different facilities or places, where's some of the other places you go? Like I'll say a restaurant. Restaurants have different behavior things that are accepted and not accepted. You have to follow the rules of the manager of that restaurant. If you go to the library, there's rules of that library. There's rules of the road. You Maybe you've heard people talk about rules of the road when you're driving. There's always rules we have to follow. I have to follow rules of the sheriff's office, rules of the state, just like you. I have people in charge of my actions, just like you have people here in charge of your actions. And so when a principal or an assistant principal, one of the, or vice principal, one of the administrators of the building, when they ask you to do something, the expectation is that you do it. If it's reasonable and what, like with us, if my boss asks me to do something, if it's a lawful order, if it's reasonable and in lines with what we do, I have to do it, and if I don't, I get disciplined, even as an adult, and even though my boss is younger than me. There's rules that I have to follow as well. And so, by you coming to public schools, you and your parents agree that you will follow the rules of the district and of the building administrators. So when a student does it, doesn't, when he, I think it was in PE, is that where you guys first talked? No, it was in the gym. In, in, in the gym, okay. So each time it's a little bit different setting and a little bit different approach. So me coming in here is a different setting and a different approach. Once your, once your dad comes, it'll be a different setting. It might be the same setting if he comes in right here and he'll have a different approach. But the end results today, it, it, what went from just being in Mr. Chapel's office now might be some actual discipline from the school. 
So that might be where we are right now. That's up to Mr. Chapel and the conversation with your dad. When I talk with people in the public, to include students here at the school, I look at what best serves the student, what best serves what best serves the rest of the students in the class. That's why the rest of them got up and left. They didn't need to sit and be part of this conversation. This is a conversation with the four of us. And then I look at what best serves the school and the community. And so they called me down today because I was another resource for them to see what could serve you. So that's why I'm here today to see what the challenge was, what the issue was, and then how do we resolve it. In your mind, what does a good resolution look like? How, how do we problem solve this? You want to go down and down to the office and talk with Mr. Chapel down in the office? Because where we're going to end up going is the conference room, and it'll be with your dad, and it'll be with the principal and myself, and, and you obviously in the room, and we'll kind of work through and have a conversation like we just did, and we'll do a little bit of problem solving. But there's, there's no need for anyone here to be upset, yell. I didn't come in yelling and stomp on my feet and banging on the table. That's usually not how I work. You guys had an intruder in the school a couple weeks ago, didn't you? Yeah. It's a disturbance. That man's charged with a crime. He violated state law and he violated school board policy. School board policy, there's a lot of wiggle room and flexibility in there. You're being defiant today, you're not listening to the building administrator is a violation of school policy, not a crime. School policy, so that's why the parents get called. And that's why there's sometimes discipline with the violation of school policy. Would you like to go down to the conference room? Not really. Not really. Okay. So in in your mind, how do you think this is going to play out today? Probably expelled. Is that what you'd like? No. Okay. What would you like? To keep learning. Okay. What does that look like for you? Paying attention. Okay. Is it going to be challenges at home because Will Dad be upset that something happened here at the school today? I don't know. Okay. We can mitigate all of that. We can we can adjust how that happens by our conversation now. Depending on how, if if you're down in the conference room, that's a huge win for you, and that's a good step for the school district. If if Dad comes down and finds you in here versus comes down and finds you in the conference room. Those are two different reactions, usually from a parent. In the conference room, is a much better reaction. In the classroom, with the class that's been evacuated, that's usually not a good, not a good response for a parent. So we would like to have you still in school. We would like to have you continuing to learn. But, but when we have disruptions in the classroom, you, you, you and your actions today this is a very frank, very matter-of-fact conversation right now. Your actions today stop the learning of all of the other kids in this class. I would like them to go back to a learning process. I would like you to go back to a learning process. And I think what that looks like today is you going down to the conference room with the administrators of the building and having that conversation with them and your dad when he gets here. What do you think of that? Is that an okay, not okay? That's an okay thing? Okay. But I'm questioning. Sure. Who's it for which which person? Both of them. Okay. So if I go down there, right, and you guys talk to my dad and stuff, can I come back in class this, this today? Oh, I'll have to see about that. What uh, what classes do you have still? Because today's a regular day. 
So it's no, almost. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, did you already have your assembly? No, I assembly's at the very end. At, at the end, okay. What classes do you have? What, I, I what, have what subjects this afternoon? Math and band, which band is by far my fifth class. Okay. Which instrument are you playing? Trombone. Trombone, okay. Cool. So that'll be a conversation you'll have to have with them and your dad. I, I don't make those decisions on if you get to stay or not. When you see other students, and I, I don't want to say following like sheep, when you see other students being disorderly, being disruptive, how does that, what does that do to your education? What does that do to your learning process? Does it disrupt it? Does it kind of just kind of a speed bump disrupts it for a few minutes? Or is it more of a, a big deal? Like when that dude came into the school and you guys went into lockdown a couple weeks ago. I mean, I was in PE. But... Was it as much? It didn't yeah. affect you as much. So there's always consequences to our actions. If I say something that's not right, that's inappropriate, or at the wrong time, if I don't drive properly, if I don't listen to my employer, there's consequences. Like if I'm at home and I don't take the garbage out, if I don't feed the dogs, the dogs are yipping at me to be fed. There's consequences for things I do. So even here at the school with you as a student, there's usually consequences that follow. Because if there isn't consequences, then the, then the students usually don't learn from their mistakes. It's just as much about the education of how things work as it is having a student follow directions blindly. As humans, sometimes we follow things blindly because, oh yeah, they told me to. But it's also nice to know the backstory of why that is. And that's what I, a little bit of what I tried to give you today. So you have a little bit better understanding of when a school administrator gives you a directive, a, a, a directive is a, you could say an order, the military they call it orders, um, you know, advice, if he gives you an option, um, you know, if you can, take a few minutes and think through the consequences. Um, if you were to be defiant and sit here until your dad got here and not leave until your dad got here, the consequences would be different than if you go down to the conference room and have a conversation like this with the school staff and your dad in the conference room. So even though sometimes, let's say I'm, I make a bad choice about something, I can kind of correct myself from that and make different choices, or I can be defiant and kind of stay in that rut, but that usually causes more problems for me. And it usually the same thing with, with other people. That if the principal or sister principal makes a bad choice, okay, we make bad choices. Sometimes we make bad choices or poor choices because we don't know any different, and other times we're being stubborn. I get in bad moods, I get ornery. And if I continue to stay in that mode, it causes me more problems than if I go, okay, yeah, I can. I can do something a little different. And so today I'm asking you to do something a little different. And let's not be as defiant. You, you've proven your point. You've asked your question. We can work through that. But now let's kind of switch over to something positive and go have more of an adult conversation or a, a young adult. Are you 14, 13? 13. 13, teenager. So we can go have a teenager and adult conversation. The conversation with you now versus when you're a fifth grader is different. You can understand a lot more, process a lot more, comprehend a lot more. Your decision making is a little bit more involved than you are when you're a fifth grader or fourth grader. And that's what we'll try and do today is have more of an adult conversation with you. It's a growing process. Everybody goes through it. Every student in this school goes through. There's adults that are still going through and still learning. I still learn how to work with people every day. I talk to people every day. 
of conversations like this with students every day. And the best part is to see them a week from now or a month from now in a classroom working and working awesome. And that's what I'd like for you is to see you in a week from now or a month from now. And you're doing an awesome job, having a good time, having an awesome time. Some days, some days we come to school and they're bad days. I know, I see it in the students. Some days I come to work and I don't feel like it's a very good day. But I have to make it a good day because students like you depend on the resources that come to help them to have a good day. It's a responsibility that I have when I come to work. When I put the uniform on, I have to try and treat everybody the same. Everybody with respect, dignity, kind of save face a little bit. It's not my goal to come and embarrass you. But I ask them to empty the classroom for the other kids' safety and for yours. But if you're willing to go down to the conference room, uh, it, that's up to them and their decision on if you get to spend the rest of the day or not. Hey, Brad. That's probably your dad's here. Walk down there? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. And what I'll do, I'll, I'll uh, do you want me in the room and you're chatting with dad or do you want me to hang out outside? I'll give you the option. Okay. Is this yours too? Oh, this is another student's. Okay. Awesome. Thirty-four minutes of that. What? 